Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and security researcher, and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I want to talk about Amazon Renewed Computers. Is that how it's called? Let me see. I want to make sure I got this word right. Yeah, Amazon Renewed. Uh, so, okay, I am working on a Bitcoin masterclass. If you've been watching this channel for some time, you know about this. Um, now, the whole Bitcoin masterclass and guide that I published on GitHub was designed for a specific piece of hardware. And this is it. It was designed for a Raspberry Pi 4 with a Samsung T7 Touch SSD. Problem is, no one can source a Raspberry Pi right now. For some reason, there's like an international shortage of these computers. And prices for them, when you can get hold of one, are now like kind of 4x what they're usually retail for. So this computer is like 200 bucks. Um, so that was a problem. I had a masterclass that I was busting my to do. Uh, and it should be released shortly, link in the description, but I wasn't able to find, uh, or it wasn't possible for you guys to find the Raspberry Pi, which is a bummer. Uh, so I had to find an alternative. Now, I used to buy computers secondhand in computer stores, and that was super cool, because I could go in a store and kind of like play around with a bunch of different computers, find one that I like, and just buy it. Strangely, this doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, all the computer stores that I used to be able to do this at, they just don't exist. They're closed or they no longer have you know, inventory. So I needed an alternative. So I did stumble upon uh, Amazon renewed computers and thought I would give it a try. I was like, what can I lose? I can just send it and get it refunded if ever it doesn't work. Uh, spoiler alert, I found a computer that I'm pumped about, which I'll discuss in a second. Uh, but I also ordered four before that specific one, uh, before I found that specific one. So uh, yeah, let's let's go down the rabbit hole. Um, this here is the computer that I am keeping. This is an HP Elite Desk, one liter chassis. Uh, it has an Intel i5 6500T CPU, T line of Intel processors are more energy efficient. This runs at 35 watts. It has a USB-C 3.0 port, two USB-A 3.0 ports, has a bunch of different IO in the back. And this specific unit, which is the fourth one, so the last one that I received, actually has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is amazing, but I'm disabling it because this is gonna be used for a Bitcoin full node. Um, as you can see here, it is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's actually hard to tell that it is used, except for little scratches here, a little dent, there and a little scratch here. So this one is in pretty good shape. That said, I had to order three before I got this one that is pleasing looking and actually works. The first one that I received, which is the exact same model here, is even cleaner. I was pumped when I received this one, but sadly the USB-C port has a problem where when you plug the cable in the wrong way, because this is supposed to be compatible both ways. There's one way that it just doesn't work. So it has a defective USB-C port. That's the only actual hardware fault that I have on four units. So it's actually pretty good. So can you expect to get a computer that works? Yes, except for really like small edge cases. That said, this is the first one I ordered. The second one that I ordered, this one had 16 gigs of RAM. I said, you know what? I'll go for an eight gig RAM version. It's cheaper. I'm trying to find something that you guys can buy at a really affordable price. And this here is what I received. So at first I was like, strange, why does it have holes? And what I discovered is this model here, which was advertised as, as a i5 6500T, was actually an i5 6500, uh, which runs at double the amount of watts. It's also faster. It's about 15% faster. So um, that said, for a full node, you want something that is probably quiet. Uh, you want something that doesn't draw too much energy. So this is just not what I wanted. And also, as you can tell here, it has like cosmetic, cosmetic, cos cosmetic issues. Uh, and also, I mean, except for this, this here, it's hard to tell. It actually took me some time to figure it out, but this here is actually a sticker. You can tell by the line here. So I'm guessing this was kind of all, all scratched up underneath. So they put a sticker. The way it works is Amazon Renewed Computers. Uh, if you hold it at arm's length, you're not supposed to tell the difference between a new one and a refurbished or renewed one. 
Uh, this is totally not the case for this one. The front panel is kind of really bad. Uh, I then ordered another one because remember, first one had a defective USB-C port. Second one was not the right CPU and it was not in great you know, cosmetic shape. So I got a third one, again, an eight gig, and I received exactly the same, a bit in better shape, but it also was an i5-6500. Um, which by the way is more performance. So for some use cases, it's actually good, but it's less stackable because it has those top vents and it's definitely noisier. Uh, now I, at that point, having three of those and I'll show the boxes using B-rolls, this whole place here is a mess. Um, at that point I was like, man, Amazon is never going to, you know, refund tree computers. So I got in touch with customer support, which by the way, is a real pain in the ass to figure out how to speak to a human. And the person was like, bah, no problem. You know, either buy another one or send them all back. It's cool. So I don't like doing this for the environment, but I did it for science because I knew I was going to publish an episode and I wanted to really share that full experience with you. So I purchased another one and this is the one that I received. So, I mean, it had, a, you know, a few little scratches, which is totally acceptable. Even if I'm a bit OCD, I'm cool with that. Nice front panel, uh, no faulty ports. And this one actually packed in a little built-in Wi-Fi uh, chip that can be disconnected for privacy reasons, but it has built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. So I was like super pumped. That was the one that I was keeping. Uh, and yeah, so what what is the takeaway of this whole story? Well, Amazon Renewed, I guess, is kind of like the way that we buy secondhand computers in 2022 if you need something very specific. I wanted what we call a one liter chassis with a decent CPU. I was aiming for a quad core. This CPU is a quad core. I was aiming for something that is silent, for something that is energy efficient, for something that isn't too big if you need to pack it in a suitcase and travel. Um, I also wanted something that I could repurpose for different use cases. And this computer is really cool. It also has an NVMe SSD slot inside. Um, it has, well, it actually ships with a really bad uh, SATA 6 SSD, super cheap, which you can just swap out. Um, but it's it's great. So would I recommend buying one of those as an Amazon Renewed? Absolutely. I think those computers are amazing. Um, I actually updated the guides uh, and published a new guide on how to install Debian on this with encryption. Uh, Actually, spoiler for this future episode, it's quite fascinating that when you enable Lux encryption on Linux, it's probably significantly less secure than File Vault on my M1 Mac, and it probably is less secure than using this biometric Samsung device. Uh, more on this in a future episode on security of full disk encryption and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, if you're interested by the masterclass, um, things have shifted a bit, but I want to start by saying a massive thanks to everyone who is seeding the Bitcoin dataset torrent. So if we go here really briefly on GitHub, um, actually, I'll talk about this in a second. But if we go on GitHub uh, here, there is a torrent that uh, is essentially a pre-computed data set, which makes it possible for everyone around the world to bootstrap nodes on weaker hardware, such as the Raspberry Pi. It's actually really cool for the planet because instead of brute forcing all of this computation to do the initial sync, uh, it can be bootstrapped all the way to like maybe a month ago. So it's really good. Uh, and in order for me to be able to share this with the world, uh, it's just not something that is scalable if I'm doing it on my own. So right now, seven of us are sharing this torrent on my own self-hosted tracker. So that's super cool. So if you wanna share it, you just have to go here, go on MISC, and there are two guides on how to do this on a headless Debian server or using transmission on Mac OS. So thanks to everyone who is seeding the data set. It's a slow start. The masterclass is taking a bit more time for me to deliver. What I discovered through benchmarking hardware is that it is very hard to put together a synchronous uh, masterclass. So for instance, us getting together on a Jitsi call. The reason is depending on the computer and depending on everyone's bandwidth, it's not deterministic. We don't know how long each step can take and there are a lot of steps. So I quickly discovered that it wasn't possible to do this. And actually I wrote uh, a guide to uh, that, that all of us can actually run 
quite effortlessly on Linux. Uh, and I would love if you could share your results. So essentially there's a few dependencies, most of which you might already have on your computer. And then if you run the benchmark, it uh, yields results like this, uh, which give a really good idea of performance of the SSD, of the CPU, of the CPU in the context of SHA-256 computation. And it also gives a score which is the amount of times faster that that computer is versus a Raspberry Pi. So for instance, this computer here is about 10 times faster uh, in the context of Bitcoin computation than the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if you end up you know, generating those benchmarks, which would be amazing, uh, please share them. So there's a discussion here on GitHub discussions where I have submitted my result. Uh, also Slush from Trezor has submitted his, which is in insane, his computer kicks total ass. It actually took him, I think, something like six hours to do IBD. Uh, we had this thread going on on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter, by the way, link in the description. Um, so yeah, thanks to everyone who's seeding it. Thanks to everyone uh, who might consider joining the masterclass. I'll put a link in the description to it. I'm hoping to have it be asynchronous. Uh, and for that, I need to be able to stream paywalled content a little bit like if you were watching this episode, but you had to be a member on the website. Um, and thankfully, I was able to put together a proof of concept, which is available on my GitHub repository. I'll actually link it in the description as well on how to self-host paywalled streams or, or what we call adaptive streams, meaning if you watch it on an iPhone versus a computer with a 4K display, it will stream a version of the files that's more efficient and it can detect bandwidth and swap or switch from one to the other. It's super cool. I might create a whole episode on this. Let me know in the description if you're pumped about this kind of content. And actually, if you did purchase a computer uh, or an uh, Amazon renewed computer, let us know the, how it went. Like, was it a cool experience? Uh, was it a disaster? Let us know in the, uh, comments. Who? I've been in rabbit holes for some time. Um, so super pumped. I'll be in touch. I have like a massive lineup of content. I'm just kind of like uh, resurrecting if it's a word from the rabbit hole. And I'm really happy to be back and a lot of content will follow. Bye.